Hey everyone, welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I'm Acacia Courtney. It's a beautiful Thursday afternoon here as we are just two days out from the Pegasus World Cup, but we have 11 races on tap today. Let's head up for those track and weather conditions. 11 races on the Thursday program here this afternoon. We started out the day with the fast main track and a firm turf course. Mother Nature would roll in about halfway through the program and we came off the grass for races eight and 11. First of the day over the grass at five furlongs, made in claimers in for $20,000. Scratch number four, Immaculate Heart. Blinkers off the six and Jolly. First race favorite number five, Salcido Roja. Racing at Gulfstream. The big favorite, Salcida Roja, wins the break and establishes a clear lead already from Grand Diamond, who's dirted out of there to try to get over while second, ahead of Angeli in third. No save Vende on the outside with Velt toward the rail, then back to Rosa Star and Beans and Rice. Past the half mile, three to five favorite, Salcida Roja in control, leads a length and a half. Grand Diamond tries to get after second, two back to Angeli third. Up to fourth is Rosa Star ahead of Velt, is No save Vende not cornering very well. Beans and Rice is last, and the favorite is first. Salcida Roja looks tough to oppose at this stage. A quarter of a mile from home and five on top. Grand Diamond is an all-in second, tackled by Rosa Star, then Anjali and Velt. Top of the lane, leading jockey Luis Saez and Salcida Roja lead it by five. Second is Grand Diamond, third is Rosa Star with Anjali. Final eighth of a mile, it's the big favorite Salcida Roja still going. Salcida Roja now by three and a half, but that's enough. Salcida Roja, gate two, wire. Grand Diamond second, Rosa Star third, and Jolly was fourth, and then Velt in 56 and three. You never like to say so in the race call, but this race was over about two steps after it began. Once number five, Salcida Roja, got a hassle-free lead, there was nobody catching her. Luis Saez rides the daughter of two-step souls to the victory for Armando De La Cerda and owner David Rodriguez. To the second race now, the start of the early pick four, one mile over the main track, claimers in for $6,250. Field of six, all the money for three special counsel, and six, Jordy's ready. And they're up. Special counsel was away well from the outside. Jordy's ready won't be far away, so the two favorites break smoothly. Moving out the inside, appealing Lolly Bella part of the pace scenario. So fresh is between horses. But as they exit the shoot, Jaramillo puts special counsel on the lead. Three parts better than Jordy's ready second. Optimistic shot is tugging at Sanchez and moves up on the outside. Now third and only a length off the lead. Fourth is so fresh. Fifth is appealing Lolly Bella. And back to last is Ryomar. 24 and one for an opening quarter speed. There's five furlongs left to go. With the advantage, special counsel in front by a half a length. Jordy's ready, keeps the pressure on second. So fresh is third. Appealing Lolly Belly at the inside now takes over third. Three wide while second last is optimistic shot and still far back to Ryomar. Past the half mile and moving to the far turn. They went 47 seconds to the opening half mile and the leader remains special counsel. Gets clear again to lead by a length. Jordy's ready is still second. Third is appealing Lolly Bella. Driven fourth is so fresh ahead of optimistic shot. Ryomar far back, less than three eighths to run. With the advantage, it's special counsel. Three parts better than Jordy's ready. Working awfully hard to try to get back on terms. So fresh is third, appealing Lolly Bella is fourth with a quarter of a mile left to go. Three quarters, 111 and two in their appetite top of the stretch. It's Special Counsel who leads the way by two. Jordy's ready is still second. So Fresh is still third. And now there's an eighth of a mile to go. And Jaramillo asks the leader to finish the job as Special Counsel continues to find by three. Jordy's ready cannot stay with Special Counsel, who's a gate to wire winner. Second, Jordy's ready. So Fresh is third. And then appealing Lolly Bella. Favorites run one, two in today's second race with the tactical edge and the win goes to number three. Special Counsel under a very nice ride from Amisai Al Haramil from Milt Wolfson and NTS Stable. Six, Jordan's ready with second ahead of the two so fresh. Ran third. We'll be right back. One of the world's most anticipated thoroughbred racing events of the year returns. The third annual Pegasus World Cup Invitational at Gulfstream Park in South Florida. Drawing competition from around the world with a $16 million purse split between two grade one races. On the dirt and on the turf. Experience the incredible fashion, spectacular world-class service and entertainment. 
unrivaled adrenaline of the Pegasus World Cup Invitational. Saturday, January 26th at Gulfstream Park. Get your tickets now at PegasusWorldCup.com. Back now for the third race of the afternoon. Five furlongs over the turf. Claimer is in for $16,000. Scratch the nine. It was a late scratch of Silver Wings Revan. Eight to the gate. It was a wide open betting race. And they're off. Picture perfect beginning. Escarapella gets the first call and fires to the front from the outside. That's Dragon Moon away with speed. Yes, siree, and the gray Diamond Mint away in the top flight. Then back to Zigzillion, who splits horses with GQ cover up toward the rail. Four clear of Shidoshi, and Stormy Forecast is last. Past the half mile and moving to the far turn with the inside edge. Yes, siree, but only narrowly. Diamond Mint up alongside is now up for a narrow lead. Three wide and Dragon Moon from fourth and Zigzillion. Working to the outside fifth is GQ cover up. Three wide, sending a Scarapella four wide. Four back to Shidoshi and they're at the top of the stretch. Many chances here with the advantage. It's Diamond Mint. GQ cover up. Launched into action by Miguel Vasquez down the stand side. Splitting horses now is Zigzillion and alongside Dragon Moon. They come past the eighth pole. GQ cover up on the outside toward the inside Zigzillion. GQ cover up has the lead. GQ cover up in front. Two for Wolfson and NTS. Second was Zigzillion closer for third in 57 flat. Number two, GQ cover up provides Milt Wolfson with a back to back training victory as he gets the victory here today under Miguel Vasquez. Same connections that won the second, they win the third. GQ cover up, that's NTS stable and Milt Wolfson. Second four, Zigzillion. Third was number five, Diamond Mint. To the fourth race we go. The fourth race on the main track at seven furlongs. Claimers in for $30,000. Scratch number six, All Golden. A field of five. Favorites included three, Florida Cotton. And four, Long-Term Relationship. And they're off. Good start in the center for Florida Cotton. Gemologister is going to run with him in the early stages. They open three on Sensational Sam at the inside. Encourage and honor, and the trailer is long-term relationship. Down the back stretch they go. Jonathan Gonzalez takes hold of the big gray Florida Cotton. He'll angle to the two path and chase the speed of Gemologister. Now third and closer is Courage and Honor. Back to fourth, Sensational Sam, and the trailer is long-term relationship. The opening quarter was 22 and four as they head to the half mile point. Gemologister at 18 to one leads the way by a length. Florida Cotton on his flank while second at the inside. Courage and Honor is third. Back to fourth is the tandem of Sensational Sam and Long Term Relationship. Separated by three and a half in the run three furlongs from home. Gemologister with a narrow advantage. There goes Florida Cotton on the outside. Florida Cotton now strides forward to take the lead at the 5 16th. At the inside, Courage and Honor saves ground and moves with him. Back to third, Gemologister driven fourth his long term relationship with a quarter of a mile left to go. Toward the inside, Courage and Honor ridden very confidently here by Brian Hernandez Jr. Cut the corner and now has a narrow lead. Florida Cotton right back at him from second. Long term relationship putting his best foot forward late in the game. Three across the course here. Down the center and long-term relationship. Courage and honor toward the rail. Long-term relationship is in time. Florida Cotton battled back to get second from Courage and Honor third. Then sensational Sam and Chimologister in 123 and two. Really a good run today from number four, long-term relationship. It was in a drive for much longer than any of the other rivals in this race. Nevertheless, he put his best foot forward inside that final furlong and got up to win it under Jose Ortiz, who kept after the son of Nicanor, Patricia's Hope LLC, and Mike Tomlinson. Second, number three, Florida Cotton, and third was the one, Courage and Honor. We move now to the fifth race of the day, five and a half furlongs the journey, made in claimers, in for 12,500. Field of eight, favorite was the one, Subtle Hope. And uh, they're off. The favorite, Subtle Hope, wins the break and goes looking for the lead from Chesapeake Bay, who comes away racing in second. These two have opened two on my Sebastiana, who's out of their third. Daisy Storm is next, and then up on the outside goes Positive Thinking. One classy lady is toward the rail. The two at the back are flying my way and Buena Moza. 
past the half mile and moving to the far turn. It's the fleet-footed favorite, Subtle Hope, on top by three. Chesapeake Bay second, positive thinking, now runs on to be third. My Sebastiano is now backpedaling through the field up on the outside in Buena Moza. One classy lady is next toward the rail ahead of Daisy Storm, and still at the back is Buena Moza. They run to the top of the stretch with a quarter of a mile left to go. Subtle Hope hasn't given them much of a chance. Leads off the turn by two. Chesapeake Bay is in shouting range under Jose Bautista. The rest are far back with three sixteenths to go. Jimenez gives the cue to Subtle Hope to finish it up here and leads now by three. Chesapeake Bay is still second, well clear of a third running by Sebastiana, but the favorite's a winner. It's Subtle Hope who puts down the knee and runs out the clock to win the fifth by four in the end. Second, Chesapeake Bay. Third, my Sebastiana. Then one classy lady closer for fifth and involves flying my way and Buena Moza in 105 flat. Just like in today's first race, this fifth race was over before it began as number one, Subtle Hope, set the lead and got a hassle-free lead at that. Albert Jimenez just had to pose for the picture on the daughter of Dialed In from Lily Curtin as and owners Teresa and David Palmer. Second, number four, Chesapeake Bay, and third was number five, my Sebastiano. Time for a commercial timeout. The Rainbow Six sequence begins next, right after this. And Go Zipper is pulling away. Zephyr blows them away with an eye-opening performance. Odds of again has won! Go Zephyr kicking clear. Judy the beauty! Back now for race number six on the program, the start of the Rainbow Six, one mile over the firm turf. Maiden claimers in for $20,000. Scratch the 11, 13, and the 14. A field of 11, this was a wide open betting race. And they're up. For the inside, oh, what a moment begins well. Bienville Street has speed. Up on the outside, Sacrifice won't be far away. Getting caught wide to the first turn, Stroll to the beat, and Mizzen the Cove is widest of all in the charge to the first turn. Behind the embattled pace setters is Spiteful to race about four lengths off the lead, then Super Mama. Kala Cove is at the inside, two and a half lengths clear of Molly's Lane, who's third last. Sunfest is second last, and the trailer is right of return. Around the first turn they go. It's Sacrifice in front by a neck. Up on the outside, Stroll to the Beat is there second. These two have gone three lengths ahead of, oh, what a moment, third. Bienville Street is back to fourth, then it's Spiteful. Ms. Nikova is on her outside. Super Mama, the favorite, is mid-flight, settled nicely, about seven lengths off the lead, working three ahead of Kala Cove. It's another four lengths back to Molly's Lane, who's three better than Sunfest, and rate of return is an awful long way behind with less than half a mile to go. The opening quarter was 22 and four. They went a half mile and 46 and one. Pace of plenty as they hit the far turn with Sacrifice still in front. Up on the outside, Stroll to the Beat is there second. Bienville Street is third. Super Mama's made up a lot of ground. She's weaving through horses. She's in the blue silks about three lengths off the lead. Trying to run with her on the outside is Miz in the Cove. And then next at the rail is Oh, what a moment. Calico finds her best stride and alters course next and they're at the top of the stretch. Bienville Street comes away with the lead. Up on the outside, here's the favorite. Super Mama let go by a Red Ortiz Jr. on the outside, but up front, the leader has a kick. Bienville Street by two and a half. Super Mama's now has her back against the wall. These two moving well clear of the others, but Bienville Street is clear. It's Bienville Street and Paco Lopez to win by three and a half. Super Mama well clear for second. Calico was third. Then, oh, what a moment. A photo for fifth involves Molly's Lane and Sacrifice in 135 and two. Number three, Bienville Street got a very good trip from Paco Lopez, and when she was confronted, she had something in the tank and turned away the bid of Super Mama to get the victory. But Cam Gambalotti, an owner and breeder, double W thoroughbred racing. We move now to race number seven, the start of the late pick five. Six and a half furlongs the journey. Claimers in for $6,250. Rider changes on two, tie bash to Alvaro Doniz, and nine, Mama tries to Luis Sanchez. Favorites included four, Tuesday's Rose, and five, Dreaming of Mermaids. 
and they're off. Good start out wide for Hannah Catherine, moving out the rail. Kaylee's girl has speed. Tie badge won't be far away. Dreaming of Mermaids is right there, slamming hard on the brakes was Tuesday's Rose. She tried to move through a hole that wasn't there, and she's now back fifth. Length and a half to Scorched Earth, who's two and a half clear of Fontanaza, who's fighting the rider pretty badly. Outside of her and Poultra Liza, the trailer is Mama Tries. Down the back stretch they go, and Tuesday's Rose will not settle. She's marching right forward to the lead now. Right on her outside is Kaylee's girl from second through a 23 and one quarter. Hannah Catherine is in third, a three wide move for her. Three better than a retreating tie badge. Dreaming of Mermaids is losing ground steadily. A length and a half to Scorched Earth. Then Potraliza, Fontanaza has never been comfortable, and Mama Tries has never been involved as they run past the 5 16th. Tuesday's Rose with inside position and a narrow lead. Kaylee's girl on the outside, Second from the back, Potra Liza is in full gear for Manessa. She's got a shot from there if she can sustain this rally. She's within three lengths of the lead, and they're at the top of the stretch. Potra Liza's on a roll. She's down the center, and she's running right by. Eighth of a mile to go, and Potra Liza has swept to the top. Tuesday's Rose trying to hold on to second, then Hannah Catherine third, but a nice victory coming up for Potra Liza. She's an easy winner at six to one, winning by four or five. Tuesday's Rose second, Hannah Catherine third, then Kaylee's girl in time. Badge at 119 and two. Long sustained run from the back proved a winning move for the daughter of Gradar as number eight, Potra Liza, kicks it into gear inside that final five sixteenths and rolls for an easy score in the end under Marcos Manessis for John Mateen and RCC Racing Stable. We go now to the eighth race of the afternoon. This is the race that came off the turf. We had a lot of rain prior to this race, so race eight moved to the main track at one mile. Scratch the 1, 5, 7, 8, 13, and 14. Off-time favorite number 2, Macho Mania. And they're off. Sandwiched at the start and shuffled the last is Throwdown. It was a good start for Jazar, who hits the ground running. The favorite Macho Mania being sent along. Far outside, there goes Cool Hand Coop to assume the lead. So Cool Hand Coop comes away with the lead from the outside. It's Mountain Division now second. In between horses, Macho Mania races from third. These three have gone four or five ahead of Tracy with a Y. Jazar is at the inside with Dardanellos between horses. Then it's a gap of another four to throw down, who had a subpar beginning. Second last is he. The trailer is Target Rock. The opening quarter was 24 and two. Down the back stretch they go. Cool hand coop dogged by Macho Mania up front. Mountain Division starts to lose his pitch a bit. He's third under Alvarado, three clear of Tracy with a Y. Then comes Jazar, followed by Dardanellos. A gap of three to throw down, and still at the back is Target Rock. 47 and one for a half mile speed. They leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn. Three furlongs left to go. Toward the inside, it's Cool Hand Coop to the outside and Macho Mania. Then comes Tracy with a Y who's ridden hard but gaining ground under Leparu. Trying to run home from the back is Jazar with throw down and Dardanellos and a quarter of a mile left to go. Cool Hand Coop on the inside, Macho Mania on the outside. Three back to Tracy with a Y. jazar has got a shot. He'll tip into the clear under Brian Hernandez Jr. with an eighth of a mile to go. Look out for Jazar. Jazar, he's on a roll down the center with an eighth of a mile to go. Jazar sweeping up to take the lead now. Cool Hand Coop is back to second, then Macho Mania and Dardanellos, but Jazar's the winner. It's Jazar for Brendan Walsh and Brian Hernandez by two and a half. Dardanellos with a good try. He got second. Macho Mania third, then Cool Hand Coop in 139 and one. Number four, Jazar responds to the class drop and gets the maiden diploma here today at five to one under jockey Brian Hernandez Jr. for Brendan Walsh and owner Linda Griggs. Second, number six, Dardanellos, and third was the two, Macho Mania. We move to the ninth race of the day, the start of the late pick three, West Point Thoroughbreds race of the day. Three-year-olds at six furlong. Scratch six, Liam lets go. All the money on number two, maximum security. And they're off. Smooth start. Our boy Bodie being ridden for the top from Maximum Security, who comes away to race in second. Hard Bells on the outside third. Steady Earner is back to fourth in the early stages, and the trailer is Chinamato. Down the back stretch they go. Our boy Bodie, fleet footed with a length advantage. Hard Bell is there, second, two back to the heavily favored Maximum Security, third. Steady Earners on his outside while fourth, and the trailer is Chinamato. 
Opening quarter was 22 seconds flat as they leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Three furlongs left to go. Our boy Bodie held together up front. Hard Bell keeps the pressure on second. Maximum security guided three wide, and he's on the attack, and it's right now he's going for the lead. Three clear of steady earner, then Chinamato with a quarter of a mile left to go. On the outside, here's Maximum Security laying claim to the lead. Our boy Bodie tries to fight with him second. Back to third, Hard Bell, then steady earner as they wheel for home. Three sixteenths to go, and Maximum Security bids this field a pleasant Thursday good afternoon. Maximum Security leveling off nicely. He'll win as much as he wants. Our boy Bodie is a clear second behind Maximum Security, who's a geared down winner in five or six on top. Our boy Bodie was second, closer for third, steady earner, or hard bell in 109 and four. Number two, Maximum Security learned a new trick here today. He learned to take kickback and rate a little bit. And he got the victory just the same, pushing his record to two wins from two starts under jockey Romero Mirage for Gary and Mary West and trainer Jason Service. Three, our boy Bodie, well clear for second, ahead of the one steady earner who ran third. Time for a commercial break. The late daily double is on the other side of this timeout. Don't go away. Back now for race number 10 on the program. First half of the late daily double. Six and a half furlongs of the journey. Allowance optional claiming runners. And for 12,500. Field of eight. Favorite was the eight. My big Italian friend. And uh, they're off. My big Italian friend was away smoothly. Threat got away in good shape today, and she's being sent for the top. Hello, Juliet, showing speed, and she'll land second. At the inside, it's 40 Sweetheart, followed by Tis Possible Deer. My big Italian friend's on the far outside and starting to improve a bit. Then in between horses goes Galileo's Affair. Three back to Flora Fantasy. The trailer is cotton to you. Down the back stretch they go. The advantage to Threat and Haramio leading three parts of a length. On the outside, Hello Juliet is there. Second, the big favorite, my big Italian friend. Third, while three wide. Next at the rail is 40 Sweetheart ahead of Tis Possible Dealer and Galileo's Affair. Trying to run home is Flora Fantasy and Cotton Tuya is last. Around the far turn they go. There's less than three furlongs to run. My big Italian friend starts to hit high gear now. She's on the outside of the leader threat. From between horses and hello, Juliet. Driven fourth is Tis Possible Deer with a quarter of a mile left to go. They went 45 and one for a half mile speed and they're at the top of the stretch. My big Italian friend has now come to the lead and moves away by two and a half. From the back, Flora Fantasy's gonna try to catch threat for second. Hello, Juliet is catching threat for second as they battle for second behind my big Italian friend. My big Italian friend has one to two and wrapped up. Hello, Juliet did get second. Threat held third. Flora Fantasy was fourth. Then tis possible, dear. 117 flat. Jason Service and Romero Mirage get a quick fire double on the Thursday program, and it was a popular double at that as it returned $4. As number eight, my big Italian friend gets the victory, proving her most recent was no fluke. She was wrapped up in the end by jockey Romero Mirage for Jason Service and an ownership group of Michael Dubb, Monomoy Stable, the Oakstone Group, and Bethlehem Stable. To the 11th and final race, off the turf, main track at one mile. Claimers in for $30,000. Scratch the 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, and 16. Miguel Vasquez on the 7, Come 18. The favorite was the 14, Awesome Thought. And runners away. Kind of a stutter step beginning there for Awesome Thought, who's being ridden hard to try to get into the race as Dropkick goes right after him, and All-Star Red emerges with a neck advantage. So it's All-Star Red in front, Awesome Thought on the outside, now moving forward with Dropkick between horses. Then back to Come 18, Gilded Warrior, and are you talking to me? Out of the shooting on to the main course, Awesome Thought passes the three-quarter pole with the advantage of a length and a half and won a 24-second opening quarter to get there from Dropkick, who's three to two in second. Are you talking to me at the inside third, followed fourth by Gilded Warrior, then All-Star Red, and Come 18 is last. Five furlongs left to go. Jaramillo now trying to throttle down the leader. Awesome Thought leads to the half-mile pole by two and a half. And second is Are You Talking to Me on the outside, Dropkick third. Back to fourth in Gilded Warrior, then All-Star Red and Come 18. 
Strong half mile here, 46 and one. Up front, it's Awesome Thought who leads by two and a half. Drop kick second, left three, left the three furlong point. Gilded Warriors on the outside of Are You Talking to Me? Then All Star Red and Come 18 with less than five sixteenths to run. Now they get to the quarter mile pole with Awesome Thought trying to do it every step. He leads the way by three. Are You Talking to Me? Gilded Warrior drop kick. Then All Star Red and Come 18 as they wheel in three quarters, one ten and four. Awesome Thought still well clear. Gilded Warrior is clearly second with All Star Red and drop kick. Final eighth of a mile. Awesome Thought is in front and nobody gets to him awesome thought draws in off the main track only list and goes gate to a wire all-star red second gilded warrior third then drop kick call my teen and are you talking to me in 136 and four awesome thought had to love life when he heard the rainfall at the barn area a couple hours before the race he drew into today's 11th race and made good use of it going gate to wire as a popular winner Misael Jaramillo rode the son of Lemon Drop Kid for Jorge Navarro and Imaginary Stables in Glen Ellis. Two, All-Star Red was second, ahead of the three, Gilded Warrior, who ran third. We had Surface Switch in the Pick 5 and the Rainbow 6 today. They didn't pay that well, but there were many tickets sold. But we will have a carryover in the Rainbow 6. That's the point of the story. Rainbow 6 carryover in the Pegasus Eve of more than $539,000. That's it for today. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Friday. Our first post is 12 noon, 11 more races coming up, and five stakes at the end of the card on Friday on Pegasus Eve. We'll see you then. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. 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 Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack. I'm so tired.